Hello and welcome from Seattle. This is Thomas Cole with the Laplin Corporate Webinar Series. Today we want to talk about PC refresh and deployment with PC Mover and five mistakes that uh, hopefully we can avoid. So with that, uh, let's get started. I will talk for about uh, 30 minutes uh, covering the different topics. Uh, after that, you will receive the PowerPoint a recording of the webinar and any other information um, you like to have. Feel free to forward uh, the webinar or the PowerPoint uh, to your colleagues who might not have been able to come to this uh, webinar. So just a couple of words about LabLink. Um, we are now over 36 years in business, always tackling uh, file transfer, migration, remote control, uh, all these utilities that make life with the Windows PC easier. Over the years, of course, um, we have worked very closely, uh, not only with Microsoft, Intel, but also um, all the OEM uh, partners. In the last five years, uh, we have very much concentrated on migration, and uh, that is the transfer of application data and settings from an old PC to a new PC. And I will you know, certainly talk more about that uh, as we go along. Um, so in the last years, we worked with a lot of corporate customers, um, government as well as healthcare and education. So we learned a lot about uh, what our companies and big organizations are doing, um, how effective is their uh, migration and how can we help? And so we have perfected our application more and more because of the feedback uh, from all these organizations. And I must say that many organizations do it differently. Um, probably the biggest common denominator is that a lot of these migrations are done manually. And uh, so there's a lot of improvements that we can do. So with Windows, uh, end of services, we have now seen, you know, three um, different times um, when there was a new Windows introduced. Uh, we, of course, experienced the Windows XP final update in 2014, Vista in 17, and finally the Windows 7 uh, update in January of 2020. Now, this time, uh, Microsoft allowed that you could buy uh, support uh, for a couple of years with different price points, as well as offering uh, to do uh, basically virtual PCs in the cloud. Uh, but all that uh, it is still an issue today because there are still a lot of Windows 7 PCs around, uh, perhaps a couple uh, Windows 8 machines as well, and not everybody has migrated to Windows 10. And um, why is that? Well, it is very difficult sometimes and time consuming to do that. Microsoft in the past had a little tool uh, called Easy Transfer Wizard, which was mostly for consumers. It was not really used in a, a corporate or a government space. And uh, with Windows 10, also this tool went away. Microsoft over the years started licensing PC Mover uh, for the consumer, um, but really, um, uh, abandoned that place, um, except uh, for the partnership with us. So when we talk about the migration process, I always look at five stages. Stage one is the inventory and compatibility analysis, where you really look at, you know, what have you uh, in the organization, uh, what kind of hardware and software needs do you have, what kind of budgets do you have, and you do all your planning with with the vendors. Stage two is then really defining the software and hardware portfolio that we'll, we'll use. Um, you know, what kind of imaging um, and testing will you do? Uh, what kind of user scenarios? And certainly you will plan all the logistics of the hardware, software, and services, training, et cetera. Stage three is then the migration of the user personality. And that is the transfer of application data settings uh, as well as troubleshooting during that time and the support uh, for all the end users. Uh, this is a critical stage 
Um, and we will get back to this, of course, uh, during my talk. Stage four is the post-migration help desk support training uh, on the new PC. And stage five is the reassignment and disposal of the old PC. Um, of course, we have to clean the old PCs. Um, uh, that is not a big secret. We do have a product for that. It's called uh, Safe Erase. I will not talk about it today, but if you need any information, uh, feel free to reach out to us and we can also help you with that. During my uh, uh, next 20 minutes or so, I will mostly talk about the stage three because that is where uh, the trouble really is. I believe that not only Microsoft, Intel, but also all the analysts have ignored this stage for many years. It is kind of a stage, yeah, 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 we have always done it. You know, the user can move the data, or we use Xcopy. Uh, but really what it meant that there was a lot of inefficiency and a lot of cost in that stage. So the stages one, two, four, and five might be well-defined and you know all about it. It is really difficult um, to do the stage three uh, because of very the little advice um, uh, most of these companies are giving. What we hear from our customers is very clear. PC migration take too long, require too many IT resources, especially in a time when IT resources are very scarce, and they're often incomplete. Uh, secondly, departmental differences require too many plan transfer scenarios. It is not good enough to say, oh yeah, we have one image and um, you know that fits everybody. There's more and more uh, work done that different groups, whether it's marketing, sales versus production, have different environments and they need different uh, applications um, uh, to deal with. And where the trend also gets increased with bring your own device to work, um, that even creates more complexity because users have more and more applications on their desktop that they consider are important for them and they might not be in the corporate uh, toolkit uh, that is being put on the image. Logistical issues with loaners, remote users, and foreign locations. Well, uh, right now we are experiencing, of course, a tremendous need for home offices. And uh, so there's a lot of struggle if you need to renew PCs in the home office or with remote users uh, all over the world, then this is very difficult when A, you might not be able to go to the office. Secondly, you're not even in the office yourself, you're in a home office. Um, so we have to find better ways to deal with that situation. And once the crisis uh, right now is over, I'm sure uh, we will work much harder of looking exactly at this issue. Use a downtime exceeding three and more hours because they don't have a perfectly installed PC that they get at first, they're spending too much time fiddling with the PC, trying to make it as they like it. And of course, post-migration support calls and, and uh, support tickets and phone calls, um, that really drives uh, cost uh, in the IT department um, that um, you know might uh, be much higher than what it's budgeted for. So, um, what we hear is really unbudgeted cost and time overruns, user dissatisfaction, prolonged project cycles. And so we think that the negative cost of this stage three, which is the PC migration of the user personality, has a negative cost, uh, cost impact between $300 and $2,000. And I will talk later about you know, how we, we look at this uh, cost uh, in, a, in a different way. So I think that um, there are certainly probably hundreds of mistakes that we can do, but over time, um, there's always been you know, a lot of learning, best practices, et cetera, so that you know pretty much uh, how to you know, perfectly plan your migration projects. But what we found is that there are five mistakes that we perhaps can avoid with thinking about how to, you know, how to automate the whole migration. First of all, let's not underestimate the soft costs that are associated with user downtime, user learning, data and settings recovery. Uh, these costs are usually not in the IT department. And a lot of times you might say, well, uh, that's really, you know, has nothing to do with me. Uh, you know, I have to look at, you know, our IT spending and I can't do uh, certain things. 
Well, um, certainly, you know, the head of the department or the head of the organization cares very much about the productivity. And so we have to make sure that we can do it with the least amount of cost and the least amount of downtime. The second one we found was the more customization that is left for the end user, the higher the support cost after the migration. So if you just say, well, um, just move your data to OneDrive and bring it back, uh, that's all you need. Um, there's a lot more customization that is then left for the end user, and they will call the help desk. They don't know how to customize certain things. They don't know the new OS. So uh, if there's confusion, if there's fear of doing something wrong, they will call the help desk. And that, of course, is direct cost for the IT department. And that's where budgets are exploding. And we hear that from our customers again and again is by automating it, you can put a lid on these extra costs, at least to you know, a big part of it. Remote users in the field office, home office, and international subsidiaries, in costs increase exponentially, not just linear. So if um, it might be easy to go to an office in your headquarter um, and you know, help the user with migrating the PC, it is a very different story if you have a home office or a uh, field office or even an international subsidiary. Yeah, uh, Years ago, I was talking with a company that had their PCs totally locked down. And uh, they said, well, we really have our automation is done in the sense that we give them a new image, all the data is on the server, they don't need anything to do, they just work. And after a little bit, we then suddenly realized, yes, we were talking about a very small percentage of the headquarter PCs. But when it came to field offices, especially international subsidiaries, the cost was rampant. They had to fly the IT department there. Uh, they didn't even understand the language. They did not know what's on the machine. It was always a nightmare to support international subsidiaries. Data and settings are left behind. Um, when a user can't find the data because it was hidden somewhere, um, then there is an issue. And uh, that is, of course, big dissatisfaction. And secondly, again, support costs. And lastly, an incomplete application inventory results in added migration time and data functionality loss. Um, as I said before, we are in a, in a process where more and more applications are loaded by the end user. Um, and you know, you know, apart from uh, bring your own device, um, there are a lot of reports on bring your own environment. So people are coming in with their own PCs, but they also want to have their own environment and so if you are now moving to a new PC, um, then uh, it becomes a, a nightmare in the same way because you don't even know what's on it. There was a case, I think years ago, um, when Intel wanted to move to the newest OS uh, from Microsoft and they were the post poster child. And after they started the uh, migration, uh, they stopped it and there were um, blog posts out there which said, well, once we started the uh, migration, we realized that we don't even know what applications people have on their PC. Um, so we couldn't uh, perform the migration as we wanted, so we had to stop and you know, regroup. Um, again, um, project prolongation and a lot of issues. So uh, we think that we can help with all these issues with uh, our solution PC Mover. It is an automation uh, of the whole migration process uh, where we transfer application data and settings. Um, we do, of course, have a proven track record of success in um, whether it's uh, a single PC at home or hundreds of thousands of PC in large enterprises or government. Uh, it is a very flexible solution um, that really grew by knowing all the different scenarios and needs that you had um, in your organizations. So at the end, we think our benefits is to save you $302,000 per PC, and that's really per PC deployed. Uh, so that is a lot of money. And of course, we can finish migration sooner um, because we can avoid um, these longer project cycles. Um, and we have a lot of evidence from our customers where you know they said they, they did the migration in record time. So when
when we look at what are the different uh, migration um, uh, scenarios, first of all, it is migrating to a new PC. That is the direct peer-to-peer -peer transfer over cable or the network. Um, it doesn't matter what connectivity type you're using. Uh, you can use the, the corporate or organizational network. Uh, you can use Wi-Fi. You can use um, cables. Um, we have our proprietary USB, USB 2, USB 3 cables, as well as crossover cables. Um, uh, but you can also use um, uh, mostly your own Ethernet cables as long as the new PCs have detection to make them cross over, uh, which you need for these kind of data transfers. Um, Wi-Fi is probably the least um, um, recommendable solution just because Wi-Fi um, has so, many, so much trouble with uh, throughput, um, and it depends on you know, where you are, whether it's right next to you or not, um, you know, what is your um, uh, router doing, et cetera. As part of this, there's also what we call the file-based migration, using um, a share on the server or an external device. Um, that also helps a lot with moving stuff off to first to a device and then back, uh, which can uh, a lot of times be used for um, situations where the two, the old and the new PCs are not in the same room at the same time. Scenario number two, and that is becoming more and more important, is micro, uh, migrate to a new profile. Um, currently, a lot of organizations are looking to move from a local Active Directory setup to an Azure Active Directory setup in the cloud, which means that when you go to the new profile, of course, you don't have access to your data or your user-based apps or a lot of your settings on your PC, and you need to actually move everything from the old user to the new user. Even though you think you are the same, you are a different user between local uh, Active Directory and new, uh, uh, the Azure Active Directory. So we have, a, we have of course, the, uh, the routine to do that. We can move it on the same PC or from an old one to a new one. Scenario number three is to recover from a hard drive or a virtual hard drive. This is a very unique a situation that uh, nobody else offers. Um, and uh, the situation here is if you have a PC where the drive is okay, but perhaps uh, the laptop um, um, screen is broken, um, you have an image of the machine, but the machine doesn't boot up anymore, we can actually restore your PC uh, from an HD or a readable. Uh, a virtual hard drive, meaning an image. So if you can mount the image um, and Windows can read it, then we can extract the registry and rebuild the machine. So it's a very a unique scenario. Um, it might be more used in a break-fix scenario, but there are some companies that we are working with who love to just basically take the hard drive out of the old PC, plug it into the new PC externally, and uh, that's the fastest migration. We also see some uh, of our retail partners. If you go there and you say you want to have your um, PC installed um, and have you bring your old PC into the store, they actually might take the hard drive out and attach it to the new one, and their data center will then do the job uh, for you. So it's a very effective way, but of course you need to know how to take a hard drive out, and that's not necessarily an end user play that's more a technician play. Lastly, we can also you go from physical to virtual, whether you have a virtual machine on your new PC or whether you go into the virtual world and say we have a, a virtual PC in the cloud, uh, we can certainly help uh, with these kind of uh, situations. So what can PC Mover migrate? Certainly all the installed application and the associated settings and registry, user accounts, whether they are domain or local, the drives, folder files, wherever they are, wherever they hide, et cetera. So there, of course, are some caveats. First of all, if you have an application that does not run on Windows 10, well, we can't make it run. Um, what Microsoft breaks, <laughs> break, we can't fix, per se. Um, there are also some applications that will lock your application um, with a hardware driver to your existing PC. 
Mostly those are antivirus applications, but there are also some companies that are more serious about their license usage, um, like Adobe. They will lock um, your license to that existing PC, so you have to first deauthorize it, move, and then authorize it again. Uh, and you need to talk with your um, application provider um, what the best way uh, it is to do. Um, there are also applications that require hardware drivers. So if you have your favorite scanner, there might be an old application that is, has a special scanner driver. If you go to Windows 10, that driver will not work. It will mostly blue screen, so we will not move the driver. We might move the application, but the application requires the driver doesn't work. So there are some caveats to it. In the, in the corporate world, of course, you will are testing all the new applications, so you know what's going on there. And the good news is that we have a very easy way um, to do whitelist and blacklist. And so you can filter everything um, to move to the new PC. Uh, it's very easy um, uh, using our product. So uh, when I was talking about $200 to two, uh, $300 to $2,000, uh, sometimes I get asked, well, <laughs> that, that's a broad um, spectrum. Uh, you know, how, how should we look at it? And so uh, we have what we call the value quadrant. And so if you think of PC being centralized or decentralized and being IT managed or user managed, well, as I said before, if you are in a scenario where your PCs are decentralized and they are managed by the user, meaning the user has admin rights, then uh, that is certainly the highest value. Uh, if you have uh, PCs that are centralized and totally locked down by the IT management, um, then uh, that might be the lowest value and to the point that, you know, uh, we don't play any role there. But in most organizations, you don't have totally locked down PCs. Sometimes it's in a certain area, um, but in many cases, there are so many fringe areas where you can still use a much better automation to drive down your costs. For the enterprise, and um, you know, we take that very loosely. So when we talk about enterprise, we're talking about um, organizations uh, that have more than 100 users, um, that are government, uh, schools, universities, what have you, um, that want to automate their migration a little bit differently. They don't want to go through every time the same questions. Um, you know, what connectivity do you want to use? Do you want to use a cable, et cetera, what we do in the consumer space or the home space, um, but they want to have a predetermined way to do it. So in our PC Mover Enterprise, we have what we call the policy manager or the uh, PC Mover Manager that basically allows you to create a policy in a very easy wizard um, where you can make a lot of the decisions um, already and lock that down so that the end user doesn't have to do anything or may not do anything. Um, you can, of course, do a lot of filtering. You can do blacklists, as I said, whitelists. You can create easy rules. Uh, for example, don't move any music. It's not supposed to be on the business uh, PC. Um, so you can you know, set certain rules and they get executed then at the desktop. Um, it is. The client wizard is very easy to run. It's not difficult. I would think that any IT admin will learn the product uh, within a day. But of course, there are some you know, deeper secrets. And so we work very closely in all the testing phase uh, with you uh, to be able um, to share with you our experience, uh, what other companies are doing, and perhaps even create the policies for you. Also, you have enhanced reporting so that you can see what you know, has been done at the, at the user side and even get messages and notification when the migration is done. Um, here's a, just a look at the, uh, the policy manager. It has all the different uh, views of what can you change. Um, it, you don't need to program anything. It is usually mostly uh, uh, clicks and uh, selections. And then we will create an XML file for you that's then attached to the, um, um, to the application. So in this case, you see, for example, uh, do you want to enable the network transfer? Yes or no? 
uh, do you want to do a USB transfer, yes or no? So at the end, you could say, yes, I want to run everything through the network. Don't even show this page. Well, then you don't even show the page, and it will be deleted from the whole process. But you can then only do the transfer over the network. Some companies will say, no, uh, I don't want all that traffic on my network. I want to use USB cables. And use the USB 3.0 cables uh, that we provide for that. Um, well, then, if you put that into the policy as the only choice, then nobody can use the network uh, to do the job. And so we have all these modules uh, that you can uh, select um, and uh, uh, then create a policy that will make the whole uh, migration much better. So I just talked about uh, the Azure Active Directory. This is really a new challenge uh, for many. When you go from a Windows 8 uh, or 10 machine um, uh, to go to an uh, uh, active uh, Azure Active Directory uh, environment, um, then you have a certain problem, and that is that the user loses access to all the user profile data. And um, that means you have to basically, despite the fact that it's on the machine, you have to basically reinstall your applications because the user has no rights to that. Microsoft can't help you with that. Um, they will say, well, you can use OneDrive to move the data uh, before you go to uh, Azure Active Directory, but the, otherwise they don't have the solution. So we partnered with Microsoft um, uh, on, again on this and provided what we call the PC Mover Profile Migrator uh, that allows you to refresh uh, your existing PC and move all your uh, user-based uh, application data and settings to the new uh, AD user. Uh, very easy um, and uh, very effective uh, for many companies that are now going this step. Um, so again, looking a little bit at a, at a different chart, uh, most of our customers, especially you know the, the smaller business, um, small government, um, municipal governments, and so on, they might go with a you know, just a direct connect and transfer method, which is basically you put the image on your new Windows 10 machine, you log into the, the Active Directory domain, and then you move directly from the Windows 7 or 8.1 Pro machine to Windows 10. Now, this could also be a Windows 10 machine to Windows 10 machine when you refresh your hardware. Uh, um, but uh, we can go basically from the old PC to the new PC or from the same. We always go above the OS. So we don't take any OS pieces uh, with us. You can always roll back um, the whole migration process if you think there is something that uh, is not right. And afterwards, uh, you can certainly um, delete your Windows 7, 8, 1 machine if you think you have everything there. So this is probably the, you know, the, the, the easiest way. Um, I was talking about the uh, file-based migration and we use that really um, uh, when you do, you know, the same machine refresh. So you have an old machine, uh, you put all your application data and settings um, onto a hard drive or um, a server share uh, with PC Mover. You can then install Windows 10 on that machine and then bring it all back. And then you have a fully loaded uh, Windows 10 machine. Um, very easy to do. And um, it gives you the ability to configure the machine much more than if you just uh, update um, the machine. Um, if you're using you know, some of the admin tools like Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager, uh, we can also now automate it to the point that it's zero touch. And in this, in this case, um, we will also offload the machine to a central storage device. Um, and from the central storage device, we can then automatically bring it to the new machine. So uh, when I was talking about all the different questions we have, you can actually create an application um, that, or an instance of the application that can't be seen. So the user kicks off um, 
one process and when he gets the new machine, kicks off the new process. Um, uh, that is used more and more to reduce uh, any kind of interaction from the user or from the IT department because it's, everything is um, predefined. And lastly, of course, with the remote users, um, we can uh, do that as well. And now this comes in play much more today. Uh, of course, all the scenarios can work uh, at home as well. Uh, but in this case, um, you can do a fully automated process um, with autopilot, with Intune, uh, and um, with a remote migration. And so in the time right now, um, we really have to look at some of these more complex situations. But of course, um, you can also just send the new PC to the home office um, have a stick with it where our application is on it, or uh, there is a link already uh, in email, and you can kick off the whole migration also locally. You can remote manage this, you can remote control the migration. Um, so we have all the tools, all the scenarios for you to do a wonderful job to have migrations done at the home office without going there and being there. Um, so. Uh, that will play a major role uh, in today's world. And after we get back to work, I think we will perfect these systems more and more uh, because uh, certainly uh, what we experience now uh, can be experienced uh, later. And there might be also more pressure uh, from management or the users to have more remote working capabilities. So some of you might work with SCCM and USMT. USMT is a Microsoft uh, toolkit that allows you also to move uh, data uh, and some settings from an old PC to the new PC. The problem with that is that it's an XML programming tool, so you really need to know how to program XML. And whenever you want to change anything, um, you have to start programming again. Uh, many of um, the companies that we are working with are coming to us and says, well, we want to replace that because it's just too burdensome. And the people who programmed it the last times are no longer here, so we have to learn all over. It makes no sense um, to do everything yourself. Take the tools um, that are available, that are commercially available, and although you sometimes pay a little fee, the cost savings are minuscule. Um, I always say that if if I can save you five minutes of time, you already paid for the software. It's, it's, the cost really uh, is not a consideration uh, because uh, we will save you so much time. And um, here, just a couple uh, case studies uh, more to, to share with your colleague. But um, we had a, a financial company that says, well, we saved you 40% of your time versus doing the migration manually. Well. Uh, 40% uh, is a big thing when you have scarce resources. And um, I must say that uh, that uh, we uh, won a big retail company in the US. Um, well, actually, it's, a, it's also a worldwide company. Um, and uh, after they rolled out PC Mover in a totally uh, zero touch migration scenario, they said, wow, we, you saved us five hours per PC. And um, you know, although you know, I love big numbers, that that was surprising because I would think, yeah, two, three, four hours is usually the average, but five hours for somebody that has a pretty savvy IT department is a big cost saving. Uh, the other uh, case study here was an insurance company and they had their home offices and they said, well, we save, we save $1,500 per desktop just on logistics. And um, that was sending the PC there, first a loaner there, get the old PC back, migrate it, send the new PC back, get the loaner back, uh, then getting the Delta off the machine, et cetera. So a lot of um, work that is um, needed and um, we could save them. So to recap, PC migration take too long, require too many IT resources, aren't complete. With automation, we can save you a lot of time overhead and of course risk in your project, and we can save you uh, between $300 and $2,000 per desktop. Um, I would love if you come back to us uh, to run the pilot project, 
uh, even if you are already migrating uh, a lot of the machines or have most of that done, I think we can always help you not only for the rest, but also for the future, uh, because you will buy PCs more often. And it's not about Windows 7 to Windows 10, it's also Windows 10 to Windows 10. And um, certainly we are working with a lot of system integrators and um, IT service outsourcers that um, can also help you save cost um, in the short term and uh, certainly save a lot of time in the long term. So uh, again, we will provide you with uh, all the material from this webinar and please um, you know, uh, call us, uh, send us an email. Uh, we would love to work with you on your projects and make your whole migration process so much easier and um, more enjoyable. Uh, thank you very much that you joined me today from home. Um, I appreciate it, and we hope to talk with you soon. Thank you very much.